Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. So you're thinking about breeding pythons? I'll give you the rundown of how we do it in this week's show. You're watching Snake Bites. We're about a month and a half into the python breeding season, so I thought it was a perfect time to do a show on how we breed pythons and maybe help you guys if you're deciding to do it. Now, everyone pretty much agrees that there needs to be some cool down to trigger breeding in snakes, but not everyone does it exactly the same way. We're gonna just show you how we do it and hopefully it'll help. Now, first off, we keep our temperatures about 84 degrees when it's not the breeding season. That's day and night, and typically have about a 90 degree hot spot on things like these ball pythons. Let's go ahead and start with the cool down. Again, most people agree on the necessity for a cool down in order to breed pythons. That's really for a few different reasons. One, it helps trigger follicular growth in females. Two, it increases the fertility of sperm in males. And lastly, it triggers copulation. We keep our temperatures about 84 degrees and 90 degree hotspot when we're not breeding. Now, when it comes to a cool down, we'll actually take the room down to about 76 to 77 degrees for 12 hours at night and then cool the hot Hot spot from 90 degrees to 87 degrees during the day, but here's where the cool down happens on the hot spot. We use these Herbstat Spider Robotics thermostats, and we have them set at 87 degrees during the day and dropping down to 80 degrees at night for a 12 hour window. How old were Brian and Lori when they became a couple? A, 15 years old, B, 18 years old, or C, 22 years old? Answer with a comment and keep watching to see if you're right. Before we get started on cooling and breeding the animals, let's talk about when your animals are actually ready to breed. Now typically, ball python females take about two years. Prior to cooling, you wanna really beef them up. You want them to have nice and big body weight. It's really important for follicular growth. Now typically, a female won't breed before two years old, and most commonly, they're not ready till about three years old. This big pinstripe female happens to be a four-year-old, and as you can see, she's a beast. Now you want these females to be at least 1,500 grams. I think this girl has it, but let's stick her on the scale and find out. Well, with this girl being almost 2,900 grams, she certainly is over 1,500 grams and should be perfect for breeding. But let's talk about males. There's a couple things to consider. First, weight, and then maturity. A male needs to be at least 500 grams typically. Although every now and then you hear of people breeding them as low as 350 grams. And believe it or not, one of the earliest breedings I've ever heard from a male was 48 days old, which is just absolutely ridiculous. But this albino clown is a perfect animal at 727 grams. That means he's really ready, but there's some maturity factor as well. And I wanna show you a few things about the hemipenes. Just because a male is four or five months old in 500 grams doesn't always mean that it's ready to breed. They actually have to have mature hemipenes. I wanna show you guys exactly what I mean by that. This is a killer blast heck clown that I wish was ready to breed. He's just not showing me the signs yet. Look at these hemipenes right here. You can see as I avert them, they're extremely small and there's absolutely no sperm plugs on them. I wanna show you an example of a better animal that's ready to breed. This killer kingpin is the same size and the same age as the killer blast hat clown at about five to six months old. But unlike the immature hemipenes that the killer blast had, you can see this killer kingpin has nice mature hemipenes. They're a little bit thicker, a little longer, and you can even see a little bit of sperm on the end of them. Now a full grown adult ball python male that's two years plus is gonna have even more mature looking hemipenes and it's gonna have sperm plugs typically. Now the interesting fact is you can take a killer blast just like that that has the immature and hemipenes and sometimes by throwing them in with a female over a two or three week window, even though he won't breed, the hemipenes will actually mature. So if you have a male that has immature hemipenes, it all is not lost. It still might breed. Start putting it in with your females when it hits the 500 gram mark. 
All right, let's say you have a male that's 500 grams ready to breed and a female that's over 1,500 grams. I want to talk to you about follicle growth because after all, a female is going to be receptive when she's at about 10 to 12 millimeters follicles. And then you, of course, want to continue to see those follicles grow. And I'm guessing you guys probably don't have an ultrasound like we do. And we do want to show you the different follicle sizes on our ultrasound. But for you, you're probably going to have to palpate the female. And I want to show you how to do that. Now, a 10 to 12 millimeter follicle is only going to be about the size of a BB so you're just barely going to be able to tell and you want to get your index finger right up into their abdomen area about two-thirds the way down is when you're going to start to feel those little tiny bumps now how I do it is I'll literally put the females neck right on the edge of the cage and let just slowly let her crawl through my finger again making pressure with that index finger it's really important that she crawls through the, your fingers and you don't move your hand because as soon as she tightens up you're not gonna feel anything just so you guys have an idea what a 10 to 12 millimeter follicle looks like on an ultrasound that you're gonna be pelping for, I'm gonna take this girl and actually measure her follicles for you guys. Now what you're looking for as an ultrasound is you really just wanna find the gallbladder first and then right behind the gallbladder is where you're typically gonna find your follicle growth and there they are, the little teeny tiny follicles right now. I just freeze frame them and I go ahead and measure them up and sure enough, this girl's at 12 millimeters. Now in a perfect world, you're gonna to wanna to start breeding your females right about now at about 10 to 12 millimeters. Again, the size of a BB. At about 15 millimeters, you're gonna feel them maybe the size of a marble. And then when they hit 20 millimeters, that's when you want that male back in again. And that's gonna be about the size of a ping pong ball. Now, that's gonna probably take about a month if you get a breeding at 20 millimeters, I typically wait until they hit 30 millimeters, which is about the size of a chicken egg. And again, takes roughly about a month to grow to that size. Within a few weeks of that time, they're gonna ovulate at about 40 to 45 millimeters. But let's talk about introducing males into the females. All right, guys, it's time to tune in to Barry White on your Pandora and dim the lights, because males are starting to go in with females. Not actually guys, it's actually pretty simple. All you're basically doing is taking a male that's big enough and mature enough to breed and sticking them in with a female that has some follicles. That's about it. It's not rocket science. Let's check a few males that I just put in earlier today and see if we have some breeding. Not every male is going to breed every time you throw them in with a female. I would say on average we probably have about 25 to 30 percent of our males breeding on any given day. If I hit 50 percent I'm feeling like I'm doing really good. But what do you do when you hit one of those just finicky breeders that just will not breed a female? There's a couple little tricks that I typically use. You can actually throw two of the same type of males in the cage and the males will literally combat a little bit. Now when it comes to ball pythons, typically it's not that bad. They'll sometimes nudge each other a little bit, but they're not going to harm each other. There are some species like reticulated pythons, you don't want to do that because they'll literally bite each other and rip. So you don't want to do it. But with ball pythons, you can literally put two males together and they'll agitate a little bit, oftentimes spurring on breeding. I've just watched these guys for the last 10 or 15 minutes and you can certainly tell that the one pastel ivory male was the dominant animal. He was nudging and pushing. Again, didn't hurt the animal whatsoever, but I can almost guarantee now that I've taken this other male out, 10 or 15 minutes from now, he's probably going to be locked up with that female. It's the exact same process whether you're breeding carpet pythons, reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, or even boa constrictors. You're cooling them down and you're just basically switching males into females cages and you're doing it for a few months. 
but there are a couple exceptions and I want to show it to you right now. There's a handful of boas that actually breed in the spring, not during the cool down. Now we typically still cool them off and give them that three or four month cool down, but we don't start putting males and females together until they're warmed up, believe it or not. And it's things like rainbow boas, Brazilians, Colombians, Argentines, as well as a lot of the tree boas like Amazons and emeralds. Again, they're going to be spring breeders after the cool down and they're typically going to have their babies about the end of summer or early fall. Producing baby snakes is the ultimate goal, right? It's what I live for. I just can't wait to actually handle a beautiful animal like this after it hatches out. Now, if you've done your work really good all winter long by breeding those animals, you're gonna warm them up typically right around April. Females are gonna ovulate. 50 days later, you're gonna get a clutch of eggs. A Couple months later, you're gonna get an awesome animal like this. And then all the work is certainly more than worth it. Brian Barczyk reporting from WSNK News Channel 7 Detroit. We're outside this Shelby Township apartment where there's been yet another animal attack. And as always, we're going to bring you all the blood and the gore in this exclusive interview. Let's go inside and see what we can find. As you can see, this is the scene of the crime. Obviously, Mrs. Roberts is extremely upset about this. Mrs. Roberts, could you tell me in your own words what happened with this vicious animal attack? It was a beast that bit me. What bit you exactly? <laughs> it was a beast! A giant, scary beast! She was attacked by a vicious animal. Can you tell me what happened exactly? I was, I was just minding my own business, cutting my salad, and I must have got some tomato juice on me. I must have liked the scent of tomato juice, because it bit me! Well, you can certainly see this is a terrible situation, and these animals have to be stopped. Mrs. Roberts, do you mind if we show our audience the damage that happened while this attack went down? I can't believe it. I don't want to look. People need to see this stuff so they know. There it is, right there. Where exactly? Well, it's right there. Can't you it's see right it? there. Well, I, I'm sorry, I can't quite see it. It's a beast. There it is, right there. I'm going to go get my gun. Where, where is it? It's right there. Can't you see it? Behind, behind the rabbit? It's a rabbit. It's a beast. The dragon beast. And this has been Brian Barczyk reporting from WSNK News Channel 7. Cut. This is ridiculous. Did you see this? It's a freaking rabbit. A rabbit like it bit her. This is just, I, what in the hell has come to news ratings now? This is ridiculous. I hate my job. All right, guys, today's episode was all about breeding, but that was snakes. That's stuff we see every day. I want to know if you could breed together any two animals in the world to create the perfect, awesome, super animal. What would it be? Like a snake and a dog? Would be a snog, a little slithery dog? Leave a comment below and let us know. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and some of these tips will be helpful if you're deciding to breed pythons. I'm constantly posting pictures of our snakes breeding, so make sure to hit me up over on Facebook and Twitter at SnakeBitesTV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. How old were Brian and Lori when they became a couple? Well, if you guessed 18 years old, you were absolutely right. Nice work. Alright, we have a Sumatran blood python here, and as you can see, they're really heavy. And they're friendly, body. right? They, well, let's hope so. I'll be totally honest with you, a lot of them aren't friendly. But this one, I think, is pretty good because I've known it for about 30 seconds, and it seems to be okay. But you can see how heavy-bodied they are. I mean, these guys are, are it's got to be, what, maybe 40 pounds, 35, 40 pounds?